yeah, hello again and welcome to another episode of the Coco and Dalt podcast. We are real people doing real reviews. That uh, we are. I, I'm not Coco, by the way. And I'm not Dalt. And we're uh, joining you uh, this week now because we're talking about something I'm not sure if we've watched it before. Coco, do you want to take it away? <laughs> Why, yes, I do. We're bringing you today a review of The Mandalorian Season 2, Episode 5, Chapter 13, The Jedi. And if you haven't guessed already, uh, listener, we are doing all of the episodes one by one instead of waiting to do one podcast at the end because we love you. And we're watching anyway, so right. why not? So this week, Mando finally arrives at the planet where he might be meeting a Jedi to reunite Baby Yoda with the Jedi. He lands, he meets the evil magistrate of the city that he lands close to, who says, if you kill the Jedi you're looking for, I will give you this spear made of like Beskar metal, mm -hmm. which is the same uh, metal that his armor is made out of. Mm -hmm. so, so they cancel each other out. Yeah. So he goes off into the woods in search of Ahsoka Tano, the Jedi uh, he seeks, who is from the Clone Wars. She was Anakin Skywalker's Padawan. Mm -hmm. Of he course she was. Of course she was. He quickly finds her and he tells her why he is there. Um, she's very interested in Baby Yoda, whose name, it turns out, is uh, Grogo. Mm -hmm. um, she's able to like telepathically communicate with him. So we get a little bit of Baby Yoda's backstory. Uh, he was at the Jedi Temple in Coruscant when all the bad stuff went down, and then he was hidden, and his memory grows dark. So... Mando and she team up to take out the magistrate because her sh her goal is she wants to find Grand Admiral Thrawn, who is apparently also a character in the extended universe, um, who is probably going to come back to play a bigger role later. Uh, so once everything is taken care of, she says that she cannot train Baby Yoda. So she tells Mando to take Baby Yoda to yet another planet. Mm-hmm where there's the ruins of a Jedi temple and to leave baby Yoda there. And maybe if he starts communicating via the force, another Jedi mm -hmm. will pick up the scent and come to the Jedi temple ruins and train baby Yoda. So, so that's how we, that's how we leave things. Mando and baby Yoda are flying off now. Before we start going in depth on this one, it's starting to feel a little bit like Mando and baby Yoda's excellent adventure. <laughs> <laughs> so they go from planet to planet. And at least in this one, there wasn't like, if you just do this one thing for me, right, that's I'll true. give you what you want. Like he he did help Ahsoka Tano with a task, mm -hmm. but she didn't, that wasn't the setup of it. Although I was looking at that when the magistrate said, uh, you know, if you just kill the Jedi lady, here's a, uh, here's a fabulous spear for you. I was thinking, oh, here we go again. <laughs> a new spear! I was like, oh... <laughs> If you do just, just one thing for me, right. I will give you freedom, or I will give you mm. food, or I'll give you fuel, or I'll give you mm. a new uh, spaceship. You right. know? It was getting a little trite there, but it's actually not that bad. And while I'm talking about it, this was probably the best episode of yes. the season so far. Uh, I think it had a lot of thrills in it, had a lot of uh, really good special effects. Rosario Dawson as the uh, the fabulous uh, Ahsoka Tano. squid head lady. Yeah. <laughs> she was really good. Um, I really like Rosario Dawson. I've seen her in a lot of things, and she's she's always good. And she does a lot of really good voice work in the canon, in the adventure canon. So she's pretty good. So we got some heavy firepower here. Not to mention... Michael Bean as the magistrate's uh, like personal guard. Heavy. Who, yeah, who sci-fi fans will recognize as John Connor's father right. from the first Terminator movie. Right. So, so there's a lot of, uh, John Favreau is doing a lot of winking and nodding during the entire performance here because uh, this series has got a lot of those little nuggets here and there of, oh, who's that guy? I recognize him from so-and-so. And so there's a lot of those kinds of little things. Anyway, Coco, what did you think of this episode of The Mandalorian? Yeah, this was definitely, every episode this season has been better than the previous one. Right. So it's Because we started from such a low bar. Yeah, we, we started <laughs> so poorly. Um, I realize that this makes it sound like we're giving it a backhanded compliment, but it's 
also good that we are trending upward because there's not a lot of episodes left. So the final episode of this season should be really, really good if we keep getting better as the weeks go on. Um, Yeah, I liked it. Uh, Rosario Dawson was good. Awesome to see Michael Bean. Um, Mm -hmm. This, so... I've said before that I'm a Star Wars fan, but I'm not one of those people who reads the novels. I haven't seen the Clone Wars yet, so I'm not really into the extended universe very much. But Dave Filoni uh, wrote and directed this episode, so I feel like Ahsoka Tano's character was probably not radically different from what it is in the Clone Wars. I feel like he was probably extremely truthful to that, and that was nice to see. Um, and that's because he has a background with the yeah, Clone Wars, Yeah, he's, right? uh, he's with Lucasfilm. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's one of those guys, So, or he was maybe before he came over um, to start working on The Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he I think he was with Lucasfilm for like 15 or 20 years or something. So, so. he knows the, the, the deal. He yeah. knows what's going on. Yeah, um, and uh, Grand Grand Admiral Thrawn, like I said, is a uh, is a guy who's in the extended universe also. So that might be good. Like maybe he and Moff Gideon, uh, maybe they might team up and be, or not team up, but maybe they might be like some bad guys, mm-hmm. like at the end. So this feels like it's more Star Warsy than any other episode. Right. Like the first couple episodes, it's like you know whatever. It's just space adventure of the week. But like this episode <laughs> and the previous episode feel more. They have more of a Star Wars feel. It feels more like the storylines are tying into Star Wars Mm storylines and not just, oh, we're taking a frog lady to her husband so he can (laughs) inseminate her, you know? Like, yeah, so I I enjoyed the overall storyline. I liked the Rosario Dawson character. Um, It was nice to get some backstory on Baby Yoda. So Ahsoka Tano told Mando, that one of the reasons she can't train Baby Yoda, who I'm going to keep calling Baby Yoda and not Grogu, Mm -hmm. is because... Or the child. Or the child. Is because Baby Yoda is too attached to Mando, and so his fear will make him vulnerable if she, like, uh, trains him. And I'm like, oh... I never saw the Clone Wars, but could she possibly be talking about Anakin Skywalker (laughs) and how his fears of losing Padme and his unborn child led to him turning to the dark side Mm -hmm. to try to keep them safe? Mm -hmm. So she knows what she's talking about. Well, and and briefly looking at the reviews that are out already on this, and this just debuted today as we're uh, recording this podcast, um, some of the some of the people in the uh, some of the fans are really all over some of the Easter eggs that are in this one. So they're really latching on to some of that stuff. So I think there is a lot of uh, there are a lot of connections there in terms of the universe and things like that. I think this is one of those episodes where the fans will really geek out about. Yeah. Because it's like, oh yeah, now that makes sense, or or mm-hmm. I can see this coming, or A plus B equals C for the next mm-hmm. episode. Um, I will say that this is, uh, I agree, this is starting to feel a little bit more like season one. And what I really liked about season one, or one of the things I liked about season one, was they felt like little mini movies. Mm-hmm. And they felt like they were, uh, it was like an eight episode uh, movie that was chopped up. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it looked like it, it felt like a really long movie that just happened to end in certain chapters and that kinds of thing. They felt like chapters of a larger story. Whereas this season just feels like individual stories. It doesn't yeah. feel like it's connected to anything. So now we're starting to get there. We're starting to get some connections. We're starting to feel like it's more like an extended movie rather than just another episode of, you know, when uh, Chachi goes to the store and, and then, you know, Joni rejects him, and then the next episode has nothing to do with that, you know. Mm-hmm. I know what a lot of people are uh, picking up on my reference there. <laughs> Joni loves Chachi fans or listening to the podcast in droves. I also enjoyed uh, the climactic battle between Ahsoka Tano and the Magistrate. It was mm-hmm. dual lightsabers versus the uh, metal spear, mm-hmm. and the... Um, The choreography of that was really stylized, and it really reminded me a lot of the prequel movies. Like, the lightsaber battles in the prequel movies were friggin' amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, I love those. Like, you know, in the original trilogy, there was just a lot of kind of hacking and stuff. Like, I mean, it was choreographed, but in the prequel movies, they were just so stylized and just beautiful, Mm -hmm. actually, to watch. And this reminded me a lot of that. Mm -hmm. So I I enjoyed that as well, the kind of callback to that. In the original movies, they were just kind of using strings and (laughs) glow-in-the-dark plastic (laughs) and stuff like that. I think I remember hearing an interview with Ewan McGregor sometime during the, the time the prequels were released, and he said, like, the first time he, quote-unquote, held the lightsaber, 
you know, because it wasn't glowing and stuff at the time, they were going to have to go back in and add that. Like, he was making the noises, like, meow, <laughs> meow. And, like, the production people were all getting really pissed off at him. He's <laughs> like, like, we're going to take that audio out of the clip. <laughs> well, I don't know if they were actually rolling film yet. I think he was just standing there doing, like, a screen test. And meow, That would be me if I was meow. on the set. I'd be like... <laughs> or like if you're shooting at the at the start at the stormtroopers and you're going pew 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 pew. <laughs> I mean, you got to do it. You got to do it. I mean, that's part of the deal. Yeah. Also, uh, you mentioned Moff Gideon earlier, and I wanted to uh, maybe we can play a game from this point going forward. But <laughs> it was, uh, is it Star Wars character or porn name? I think I think Admiral Thrawn is definitely. <laughs> There's a lot of them in there. <laughs> yeah, totally. like, wait, sometimes I'm like, what did he say? What I think he just said. <laughs> So Moff Gideon, Star Wars character or porn name? Maybe somebody should do a Star Wars porn. So, somebody, somebody has. Somebody on Pornhub has like a. You know that they have. What are you talking about? Feigning right. this innocence. <laughs> Pornhub. What's that? <laughs> I just learned of this. <laughs> so where would you rate this, Coco, in the grand scheme of things of the Mandalorian series that we were watching? It, it it's definitely the best episode of this season so far. Mm-hmm. I'd give it like a B plus, mm-hmm. maybe an A minus. Yeah, I'd give it probably one and a half lightsabers up. I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, we're definitely trending in the right direction. Yeah. So I'm relieved, actually, because I was too. thinking if the entire season was going to be just one-off episodes, it was going to be like, I don't know, that's a really expensive venture for Disney to be you know, bankrolling these not really entertaining or unique stories. Well, but we're I'm, getting there. I mean, the whole reason they bought the Star Wars franchise was a money grab anyways. And, True. you know, look at all the crap they've put out so far and people just keep going to see it. So, True. Although I think the, the Rise of Skywalker was the worst box office of that entire trilogy. But oh, really? Yeah, I think so. I think it's the one that maybe failed to crack a billion dollars oh, worldwide. Wow. But It's all relative, right? Yeah, it's all relative. And, you know, they still made a profit. And also... That's what happens when you churn out crap. People right. get mad and <laughs> they don't want to pay $20 to go see your crap movie. Right. If you're going to get turn out another uh, solo, a Star Wars story, <laughs> then they're going to get jaded. And I can't exactly be on my high horse about that because we are spending like $75 a year on Disney Plus just so I can watch The Mandalorian. Well, so. it's also so I can watch <laughs> the Herbie movies. That's true. Herbie franchise. And Schoolhouse Rock. And Schoolhouse Rock, exactly. Yeah. For another episode of the podcast, listener, thanks for joining us. We're going to keep reviewing The Mandalorian as it comes out until its final conclusion this season. <laughs> so until then, I'm not Dalt. And I'm not Coco. <laughs>